Hello and welcome to an episode 301, season 3, Squarespace 6 of Content, Structure, and Style, the unofficial Squarespace podcast. My name is Josh Broughton from Big Picture Web, and as with me as always is Alan Hauser. Hey, how's it going? Boy, it's great to be back. Hey, welcome. Welcome, Alan. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Long time. No, we just you just saw me right before we started. Oh, that's right. We kind of did a pre-show, and then, but nobody else knows that. So, welcome back to season three of Content Structure Style, the unofficial Squarespace podcast for people that are watching. As you can see, this is no longer a podcast, but it's now a video podcast thanks to our lovely Google Plus Hangouts on Air platform. What do you think, Alan? Pretty cool, huh? People can see us. <laughs> I'm like a horrible actor. I really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm like I, I can like do the uh, the puns and sit in the back of the classroom and goof around, but learning lines and acting, not for me. I'm an honest guy, straight shooter. That's true. Well, you know, at least it's it's a good thing that we don't have to be actors, and you know, this video platform just you, you, you just see us, so we just we don't have lines. We can just still screw things up like we usually do. Yes. Cool. Hi. Well, so um, so in this episode, you know, we figure it's been quite a while since our last episode. As you notice, Brandon Davenport's not with us of OK Geek. Um, I think there was some sort of a lost in translation Canadian time zone thing there. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? it's a bacon problem with the maple flannel plaid beard cold. I think he got pulled over by the Mountie tonight or something. <laughs> Hockey. Hockey. There's a game on. Yeah, okay. Well, Brandon, we miss you, but in any event, the show must go on. So uh, in tonight's event, we wanted, or uh, tonight's episode, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on with uh, with this, with this uh, content structure style crew. And uh, also, we wanted to talk about some of the new developments in Squarespace 6. And finally, we're going to uh, finish it off with uh, an installment we'd like to call Moving from Squarespace 5 to Squarespace 6, uh, an installment that we'll be doing throughout this season too. Oh, yeah, that's our that's our poetry slam. That's where yeah. uh, we, we do uh, impromptu poetry <clears throat> about uh, development, platform, verbiage. And migration and sure. maybe even yeah. give a tip about how to how to move from five to six if you're not if you haven't moved over yet. So yeah. So, so yeah. So welcome. Welcome everybody who's uh, watching live. I see we got a couple viewers on tonight. So welcome to to you all who are watching and also welcome to everybody who's on YouTube. Uh, so let's start off. Alan, what uh, what's what's new with you? What have you been up to in the last couple months? Busy. Just been, <laughs> been so busy, which is great. I mean, it's been been a fantastic thing. I've kind of restructured reorganized a little bit i mean not not really just getting like just real busy <laughs> i think yeah, I've, I'm... I've done a lot of re re like uh reconfiguring of marketing and things like that and the way i process things have but, you been uh, working on your goal funnel i have not actually <laughs> i um yeah, I guess where where did we leave off? I mean, was was Squarespace six even around? <laughs> I know it was. Yeah, saying. Squarespace was uh, six was around last in our last episode, and we were yeah. we were talking about moving on. We were on the platform, and 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 yet there's been quite a lot of new advancements since then. So, um, so any cool projects uh, that you've been working on? There's quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, I I've really had a lot of fun, um, and especially with 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 V six. I mean, like probably when we last. We're, we're reaching out to the public. Alan was a little bitter by, you know, well, not really bitter, but just like confused on what is this V6 thing all about? And now it's like, I I really can't imagine going back to V5. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those like amazing, amazing platforms that I, I just can't, you know, can't say enough about, which is probably good that we have a Squarespace show. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and actually, I've, I, I, I imported my... Uh, <laughs> It's one of these one of these projects that are that's going to go on forever. But my own my own site is still on V five, and I imported like three months ago, four months ago to uh, to V six, and um, didn't know what I'd find, but it was very it was it was an exciting process for me, and and uh, hmm. and I've even talked hmm. with with clients about it who are confused and concerned about like when I throw the switch, what happens? Um, 
for me, it's been one of those experiences where it's it's like a clean slate. You know, it's like um, if I'm gonna like work on a site and, and I'm gonna start and go, okay, here's here's site A, here's site B. So I, okay, there's an H1 heading. So I'll type an H1 heading, H2, okay, that's that, you know, and, and so that's usually kind of like a traditional copy-paste, copy-paste. Um, when you do the whole, the whole import, you're left with just your content. And anything that I had supporting with a visual or, you know, just like, I mean, th there wasn't a whole lot of that, but it was very much like raw, 100% content. This is, this is what I'm saying read it, and it's like, wow, this is hot garbage. You know, this is like, why, why was I even concerned about losing this stuff? No, it, it wasn't that bad. But um, but, but it, it's just a really good, like, reset to kind of say, all right, there's strictly content. I can delete all these these hidden pages that really, it was you know, more of like a sandbox to me or whatever in the in the back end there. So, but um, it was, it was, it was kind of a cool experience. So, so now I'm just like, Working more on on the design portion of it and trying to do something amazing and breakthrough, but I think I'm just going to launch it because I'm getting sick of waiting around, you know. Yeah, I, I see you tend to dote um, over some of the things that you produce, but in the end, they turn out to be really good. I'm still pretty amazed by um, the video that you've done for, oh, you, yes. for for your brand and how you integrated it into the home page of your content. So that's that's cool. Um, but, uh, yes. but yeah, so it sounds like you've been tinkering quite a bit with Squarespace 6. Um, yeah. I've, I've also been quite busy uh, doing new things related to Squarespace. Uh, I've been working a lot on uh, Big Picture Web, as usual. Uh, and, and it's funny because the, the platform has really taken off. I mean, oh. this is like the Google Trends uh, for the last you your, you couple of years. Visuals. I know, the AV. The, this is the joys of video podcasting, technology at its finest, I know. Um, but look at how Squarespace is doing right now. They are on fire, and I think it's just because they're coming out with, not only do they have the great uh, content from uh, from Squarespace 6 when they launched, but I think it's also now they're they're really getting on an awesome release cycle that, mm -hmm. that's allowing them to to come out with some new things. So I've been busy writing a ton of uh, new articles about about Squarespace 6 and what you can do with it and also been working on a couple of other, other sites um, looking to kind of build them out too now that uh, maintenance and new content is is uh, easy. But I but I also agree with you that that, that, that clean slate I when I yeah. moved when I moved it was I was hesitant at first and then a week after the changes I was like, "Oh, well, that that actually was really nice and I feel yeah. good." Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just like a fresh start, which maybe maybe a lot of people are into that, especially if you've kind of invested in a new site or something like that and you you might want to do something entirely new, but it's it's not too difficult to copy what's been done on, on the original site over onto the new site. You just you just can't throw that switch and have it copy automatically. Unless yeah. the switch might be like a month of closing your eyes and saying, Wow, my developer has done with the site. That yeah. No. Be a switch. Yeah. I, I know some people who uh, especially if you've built up a lot of custom content or a lot of specific types of other assets like photos and stuff like that, it's been a little painful, but but um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. So um, well good. It's 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 good to have the uh, two thirds of the gang back together anyway and doing the doing the show again. Um, let's talk a little bit about about Squarespace six. Let's get into the news about Look at all the new stuff that's dropped, even even like recently, like you want you want to work backwards? You want to start with like I I don't even remember the early stuff, all the 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 earlier stuff that dropped. But yeah, well, I think we can I think we can kind of rattle off some of the 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 things that have happened in the in the recent months, and just in terms of sheer excitement. Uh -huh. um, how about how about that e-commerce, huh? Oh, that's fantastic! Oh, Brandon says he'll be here in five minutes, running late. Sorry. <laughs> that's great. Uh, ah. Yeah. So so e-commerce fantastic pretty pretty awesome you know it's it's a uh, it's definitely they're you know they're hitting their their niche I think um, at first it was another one of these things where oh you can't you can't copy a page and on on an e-commerce platform when when you start comparing to you know Amazon or uh, eBay and all those it's like each page is very consistent. The whole experience is very consistent. That each design pattern is made to make you rip through that site as fast as possible and add stuff to your cart and then push you to that funnel 
Josh, which would be the the checkout process. Um, yeah. And on you know on Squarespace six, you can do the same thing, um, but I think you you also have the ability as uh, let's say it's a mom and pop shop. Let's say you have a a, a design boutique and you have let's say six products. Um, if you wanted to, uh, you know, make a really custom page with, uh, you know, you got a video and then you got a, a photo gallery and you got a map for some reason. This is where the apron was made on the map, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And then, and then you want to have five other ones like that. So, so you know, you have all those, all those random blocks. Um, it was a little difficult to to copy those or or to like paint by numbers basically like okay I need to add a text block text block you know so you, you could do it that way but now they have the old uh, copy copy the page you can copy pages in V6 <laughs> were you just waiting for that yeah I really was you, yeah that's that's the that's the Google effects uh, box here that, that we have access to <laughs> so worth it Really. I know. It took up yeah, my so, third though. So so copying pages is I mean, that was one of those things that's that was a it was a quite quite a frustration, I think, for the whole community. You know, you you make an amazing thing and now you can actually say duplicate duplicate page. So yeah. cool stuff. So uh, cool. so yeah, I mean I mean as far as e commerce, I mean there's there's been a little internal conversation that, that I've been having with a client who has a larger file than than what is allotted on the upload. There's a there's currently a 200 megabyte cap on uploads, and hmm. I have a I have a client who has a 650 megabyte video file that he wants to sell. Um, doesn't want to stream it, so you know it's a it's a unique situation. Um, and just kind of found out that we just probably have to use another solution. It's not really made for large, huge files yet. Um, commerce isn't. So um, I'm going to use a third-party solution called Gumroad, G-U-M-R-O-A-D.com. Ooh. Um, which I can show you a in, in, in a future episode. I'll, I'll show you how that integrates with Squarespace. It's very cool. Very, that's, very cool. That's neat. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've been happy. Uh, I haven't really built out much on the e-commerce myself, but I did do some exploration about it. It, or into mm-hmm. it, and and found that it was pretty easy to set up my own cart, my own pages. What I really, 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 really like about the new, well, actually, no, I think there was six reallys, um, which which is about it's three steps away from from the most amount of reallys, but um, it's because it's a oh well, it's a big deal. Uh, the 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 nice thing about Squarespace Commerce is that you can have a page assigned to every single product in your catalog, which is a, a limiting factor for almost every other plug-in shopping cart that, that you've been able to use traditionally with Squarespace up to date. And so for the first time, you now have an, uh, a unique URL for every mm-hmm. single product in your catalog. And so if you're trying to drive a lot of traffic to those pages and try to rank in the search engines, now you have a unique page with unique content and unique URL, whereas before you had one page that represented your entire shopping cart and your catalog every single product in it that was being pulled in through kind of like an iframe situation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, basically your product card is invisible uh, on those types of third-party solutions. So this was a home run for Squarespace, I think, because now for the first time, people that move their products, uh, you know... It's actual re- real content that's going to be on the page. Right, indexable pages. Google will mm-hmm. find them, crawl them, and if it's good content, people will, will link to it and, and want to share it and visit yeah. it too, so... It's... Yeah, there's there's an aha moment when I mean like there's there's of course an aha moment when, when you go from five to six and and that there's it's been a little rocky road for some people. I've talked with a lot of clients who are you know very confused the process and you know and, and, and we can go into like workflows and things like that at, at some other time. But um, there's a there's an incredibly cool like wash of oh my gosh this is amazing when when you start working on v6 and then you and then you start thinking about a product and you start thinking about okay I'm gonna sell this CD and and just just th- think about selling that CD and then bring it into the site add it as a product add the pricing to it 
and then think, how would I best sell this CD? Okay, I'll, I'll do a landing page, and I'll put a photo gallery. I'll put an audio samples of the CD. It's like there is nothing you can't do to sell that CD on a Squarespace page. So, I mean, I mean, you could break out 10 other pages and still yeah. market that one CD, and it's just you're 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 not held back. I mean, you can still have those same blocks to to sell the thing, and it's yeah. I think it's a great cool. like. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's a great. <laughs> you got three D effects there. Uh, yeah. Um. I think the 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 neat thing is that you. Ah, oh, shoot. Sorry, Alan. You really freaked me out with that. <laughs> the camera. You. Lo I I lost my train of thought. Uh, do we have an official sponsor for tonight? No. It's just. It's just snapping out of me. Snapping out of you. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, well, um, I'm, just, I'm stalling for Brandon because I know he's going to probably clip the audio when he gets here. Yeah, he probably will. He'll he'll storm in. Hey, oh, hey, guys. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. Hey, sorry I'm late. Yeah, right. What are curse we doing? Are we live? Curse word. Beep, beep, curse. This is a family show, darn it. Hmm. So um, what else is new? I know that recently they just came out with uh, the Squarespace calendar. Oh, have you have you seen? Have you used it? I've, you I haven't used it, but I've I've uh, talked with uh, a few clients who are thrilled that this is uh, that this is here. But from what I understand, it's like a uh, oh, let's 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 click through it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, it's it it's it works a very much like the old blogging or the, just the blogging platform but they've added a few different elements that make it makes it unique to events and so you have the ability to create um, uh, name your event page your uh, you can get a, two different views a calendar view and I think it's a list view and then you can do a full width one column two column on the sidebars and then um, creating it it's pretty easy uh, you have the ability to looks again a lot like a blog post title it put in the date you can add a form for people to, who if you want them to register uh, just like you'd add a form to anything else hook that up to you know email to let you know who's coming or a, a Google Doc or even a MailChimp um, list and then you have options like uh, the, the the location so you can put it on a map you can say where it's gonna be that's where I work and then uh, and then it kinda looks something like this when you're done with it so, so I think it's it's a really elegant way. I know a lot of you uh, d kind of artists, musicians, com comedians. I've got a comic who I've actually helped set up a, a website in the last couple weeks here. Um, they'll get a lot of utility out of this new event template, I think, or event hmm. page type. Um, and it's not it's gonna... funny. Is is it funnier than a regular event type? Oh, uh, like, is it funnier than a journal? Is that why a comedian would? No, don't stop. Explain. Why oh, do you okay, think... okay. So I think for a comedian, Alan, uh, it's Dang gonna. It. <laughs> I need a soundbite file thing. Yeah. Where did well, you find these things? <laughs> it's an app called Google Effects, but it, it, it kills your lower third. So I don't wow. know if you want to do that. I know. Yeah, it's really but, important. Uh, but yeah, so no, I mean, just for comics, because they have a specific use case, right? They got shows coming up. I'm right, going to be right. here, here, and here. They don't want to sit me. there and yeah, mm -hmm. they don't want to do a. A, a an event bright or you have to deal with something like that. So they want something that's lightweight just to tell people where they're going to be at and not mm -hmm. have to not have to worry about it. So I think it works uh, in a lot of cases like that. But um, much like e-commerce and a, a lot of the other features that Squarespace has, it's going to work. It, it's going to like a good eighty twenty. It's going to work for eighty percent of the people, but twenty percent yeah. of the people are going to have some sophisticated needs that might need some customization or third party. Yeah, I was, I was actually thinking. Okay, so so the comedian, let's say it's. Uh, you know, let, let's say he performs at filling stations. And so there's no, like, ticket sale, like, ticket window thing. So he's going to sell tickets. Could he sell tickets through commerce? And and how, how could he do that? When you, like, oh, app, make, like, yeah. a PDF ticket or something? How, how would you sell a PDF? T or how would you sell a ticket? I think you would, um, what I would probably do is I would set up a... I would, I would set it up with MailChimp. I would have uh, an autoresponder for MailChimp. That would uh, and I would have some. I would have it set up as a virtual good in my e-commerce cart, and when somebody bought it, I would send them basically an autoresponder from Mailchimp that uh, that that had access to um, the ticket or whatever the event was. So the, like okay. a printout or something like that. I don't know. It could work something like that. Or it could just be the text within the email that's like bold that's or 
starred or something that says, this is your receipt, keep this email or something. It could yeah, I mean, that. it could be as simple as that. You wouldn't even have to Dude, set up it. Dude, you could put, you could go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y. You could, uh, first you create a, a ticket. Congratulations, this is your ticket. Then you could take that over to bit.ly, make the QR code, put that on your PDF that you put in the MailChimp. Then visitor goes and buys it, takes said paper to the event, dude at the event table goes, a beep, scans it, says, legit. That was that was a really dumb thing, but well, it, make, it, make, it, make, it makes you look cooler, and I just came up with it. So, I mean, there's got to be better ways than that. No, but that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I think it's just, it's suffice to say, Squarespace, as usual, you can snap together a lot of different solutions depending on what your needs are, and you'll be good to go. I'm just trying to come up with a way to use a QR code, because I haven't found a good way yet. I, I do really think that QR is going to, you know, maybe like with Google Glass, you could look at a QR code, and it would just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not laughing at you. That that might actually be the first time that QR actually becomes useful. <laughs> you look at it, and it becomes the virtual. Uh, what are those three D? You've seen those, haven't you? Yeah, like a ho- like a hologram type deal or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. You do it on yeah. your camera. Yeah. Where's Brandon? I think he was lying. <laughs> I think you're right. I think he's. Uh, is he okay? Should we send for him? Maybe. Nah, we should call the uh, the royal. Mounted Canadian RCMP. Horses. Yeah, exactly. Get them out on the case. Um, mm. Yeah, so I think I think fonts is also a brand new thing. Fonts. Yeah. Like, t- like Typekit fonts. Yeah, Typekit and the Google fonts. I don't think those were around when we had our last episode. They, so I, I think they were. I, I think Google fonts were because yeah, I remember. I remember kind of. How clumsy it was! You're, are you going back and looking? Uh, I don't. Do you have a producer tell, talking to you? Saying, <laughs> I am the producer. Who do you? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking. I'm looking back. That was like in February 2013 that they came out with the new um, with the new Typekit integration, which is yes, killer. Yeah. yeah what do you think about so. that? Now, now I'm not much of a designer guy, so I, you know, I I know yeah. that Comic Sans isn't cool. I know that's not not trendy. Well, actually, is it hipster cool now? Is it is Comic Sans no, like coming back not, now? It might be cyclical, but it's like so fast that you can't. There's no way you could. You can't get in there. It's so. Yeah. It's just yeah. no. Uh, yeah, it's it's absolutely very cool. Now, one one thing I have found as the geeky designer who's in love with the uh, the fonts is I already have a Typekit account, uh, and we're talking about typekit.com uh, who was actually acquired typekit was acquired by Adobe so it's actually Adobe typekit um, anyways uh, it, it allows you to use uh, awesome fonts better than your regular web fonts um, and better than the Google fonts because they're uh, um, a lot of them aren't the open source fonts um, you, you can get a lot of the same Google fonts on typekit whatever but um, there's some font foundries uh, that make great, fantastic fonts for print use, and now they've kind of made them available for web use as well. And browsers will support them all the way back to IE6. I mean, it's it's uh, it's pretty well supported, so you can actually have a fantastic looking font on your site. Uh, but now um, you can, if you have the Typekit account, you can bring that one little tiny code. Over that that little little account number, the uh, whatever you call that setting. Injection. I believe that's the type kit kit ID. Oh, is that what? Yes, that's the the kit ID. You can bring that and you can put that into your Squarespace site settings, and then um, you can actually do all those things in type kit that you would normally do anyway. The only real advantage to that is, uh, oh hi, is you have a lot more. Um, uh, features of available like let's say, let's say you have a myriad pro that's that's right there um, you might have uh, let's say 10 different weights or something within that font um, which you might want that you might want a bold italic a bold a medium a medium italic a light a light you know all these or oblique whatever you want to call them um, so on Squarespace those 10 
features aren't available for that one font stack. So they'll have mm. maybe two to four or something available. So is that is that I mean is that is that a hundred percent true or is that can you add them in through your custom kit even if you have because I know that they, I mean, they provide, what, uh, 67 type kit fonts out of the gate, and those are ones you can't use the, um, you can't use the different weights. But even if you have your own kit ID, you're saying that you're restricted to a certain weight? No, no, no. If, if you have your own kit ID, you, you, you just do all that stuff over on typekit.com. So, so you can, you can, you can use in, in anything you want that, that, you know, that you're allowed to over on typekit, basically. So, okay. Um, but but if, if if you use the type kit font in place over on Squarespace, um, then then you have a limited number of uh, features within that font set. Gotcha. Okay. So just to give everybody an idea, like these are the sixty seven uh, type kit fonts that are available just straight out of the box in your Squarespace font panel, I guess. Um, and I, I, I went through and I screenshot them all and then I glued them together. So don't laugh at my Franken image here. Um, but, then, <laughs> but then you look at, uh, to Alan's point earlier, if you have a type kit, kit and you're on the typekit.com website and you're paying the subscription, yeah. then you can create a kit and then get that kit ID here and then basically go to your general settings in Squarespace, plop in your type kit kit ID, and then those fonts will then uh, appear in your font menu instead of the, the big list of, of type kit fonts that you'd normally see if you don't have a paid subscription. So it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool system that basically if you if you're using the the you know the the out of the box type kit uh, fonts and you're not paying for it, then those are the fonts you see, but then if you have your own custom kit, you can bring those in and use exactly your exact kit configuration, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Um, I mean, you, you could kind of do that before. You could, you could uh, use a code injection and you could um, use that, that uh, t type kit custom code. It was, it was like a piece of JavaScript you'd put in, but there were problems with it. There were, there, there were some conflicting issues with it uh, with the whole uh, thing. Oh, no, not the thing. With the stuff? The one with the stuff? Is that the thing? <laughs> it just totally went blank. Yeah. I was trying to screen, but I, you know what? We've, we've talked about that enough. We can, we can hit uh, the old uh, web fonts at some later date, really. Boom. Hey, by the way, um, mm. did you, have you seen all the Google fonts that they have, too? I have. That's nuts, isn't it? By it the way, is. if you like them, but you don't want to like have to scroll through them all, I screenshot every single one of them. Aren't you something? Well, you know, I, I'm not a designer, but I like you guys, so I figured I would uh, put that together so you wouldn't have to. A lot of designers would cringe at the fact that there's 400 fonts in there. You know, it's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like working in a large corporation. And 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 you have the administrative assistant who sends out the uh, the Outlook email that says, "Hey, come on out. We have a hot dog party at lunch." And she uses forty three fonts within there and like sixteen different colors. You don't want to do that. So well, but it's it's it, it's not hardly even possible to do in Squarespace. But what's fantastic is people without the design eye, they will do that, and their site will go. I don't know what's wrong with the site. It just looks horrible. I've tried to make it look good, and I it just looks horrible. And I look at the font, and I just know that, what are you doing? This okay. Is why, this is why you call the designer. Okay, you font hater. Um, I'd just like to point out that that was a resource if you're planning a website so you could see what kind of fonts you like. It wasn't a suggestion to oh. put any types of fonts on your website. Yes, I, I think the, the rule is to, like, Pick all the squiggly ones all go together, and then the slanty ones all go together, and that's how they... I don't know anything about fonts. I'm just kidding. You fib. I like a good slab serif myself. <laughs> Are you looking for a sound? Slab serif, slap, 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 slap. slap. Well, I don't see yeah, Brandon. I don't, think we have anything. I don't think Brandon's really coming. I don't think he's coming. Oh, wait. I, he oh. says, sorry, man, crazy day. I'm like a bull waiting to buck all these fonts all over the place. What does that mean? I don't understand. 
<laughs> oh, I bet he's responding to our uh, to our conversation. So Brandon's watching, not participating. Right. Maybe he thinks that's what he's supposed to do. I don't know. Brandon, you're supposed to be in here. Come on, get off the bench. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's all right. He'll watch it later and be like, eh, you guys are dumb. Oh, he says, add me. You're mean. So I, what I does he think we're on? Maybe he thinks we're on Skype. Yeah, no. <laughs> Go to your Gmail, Brandon. It's in there. <laughs> it's a little invite. It says, oh. Go to your Google Plus page. There's an invite that says, Hey, come on in, Brandon. Is that Imperial or Metric? The Google Plus. Because hmm. he's in Canada. I think it's. <laughs> Is it CCAM, PAL, or NTSC? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. So, so I think we're at a at a point here where. Uh, oh, hear, hey! Oh, what's what's happening? Something is Live moving. Live from Canada, Brandon Davenport. I see a little grayed out head. Yeah, that's what's... his avatar. Oh, I've seen that movie. Speaking of fonts. <laughs> you, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Avatar? The subtitle fonts. You know, the parchment. What is that font? Thank you. <laughs> is this where we where we edit the show live? Is there like a yeah. live editing feature? Where no, there's no such thing. This is the dead time. Um, Alan, maybe we want to do a, a faux sponsorship while we wait for Brandon to to get on. Um, are you are you using any new cool technology device, uh, technology products or services that have changed or revolutionized your life? No. <laughs> You mean like apps on the computer and things? Yes, yes. There's actually an app that, that Luke Abel, a, a bell, found. Uh, it's called Monosnap. And I've been using Skitch a lot for the Mac, but I think Monosnap is available Mac PC. Best screenshot app I've ever used. Fantastic. You can do screencasting, screen, you can do streaming, you can do recording, all from a screen capture app that is really cool so brandon's here I see, and i see brandon I see him. can you hear me of... yeah what's going on buddy oh where am i um can you, you are in... me? i don't know where are you you seem to be in a google plus hangout of some sort but you also seem to have like some sort of a custom you look like you're coming to us from the 70s or the 80s i am coming to you from the 70s and 80s. no this is what happens when you go to a thrift store Oh, no. this, so this, this is the C-cam camera, or yeah. pal. Hmm. I'm coming to you live from an Instagram photo. <laughs> nice. Where did you guys get these lower thirds? Is this a new uh, feature? Yeah, it's um, in the Hangout toolbox. Uh, it's an app. You can go to view maps on the lower left-hand side of your Google Plus Hangouts. I really enjoy Google Plus Hangouts. Um, but, Alan, I was referring earlier to Fancy Hands. Have you used Fancy Hands recently? I have. Yes. Yes, I love it. Yeah. It's fantastic. I've checked out Fancy Hands. I don't know a lot about it. What is Fancy Hands? It's a, it's a, it's an amazing app. Well, I wouldn't even say it's an app. It's a service, uh, and I don't know where all these people are. They're probably connected all over the world. Actually, uh, they're they're in the United States. I had somebody oh, yes, on my team. Yes. We, is, we started. Yes, only. Yeah, we started using Fancy Hands too. It's it's basically a um, it's a it's a it's a remote administrative service and they'll okay. do so many things for you like research stuff they'll make appointments they'll cancel your comcast and sit and wait online they're yeah they're wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute i thought this was something like that meta lab thing like you your you help your friends help you do your tasks like they actually do stuff for you yeah, yeah. they actually do stuff like like i I've, I've i didn't I've, know that i thought so literally they'll just do stuff for you yeah you can yeah. say uh hey um so and so email so and so and let them know i'm running you know 27 minutes late to the meeting. I, I don't know if that's oh a good one God. because sometimes it takes a little while. But, you know, I mean, you can say, here's here's a list of 10 people. Please email them and let them know the following. Bam. And you just go on to something else. That is incredible. So, yeah. how, like, how much does, like, how much does it cost? It's like, uh, I think it's $25 for five tasks, which is kind of kind of that's a little not ridiculous. Bad. That's not bad. No. I mean, I don't like waiting on hold. No, I mean, but, like, you're, waiting you're, on hold. Your first sign up, um, I think I, I've got like twenty five for thirty two bucks or something like that for for a month. Not bad, not so, bad. I mean, and, and you, you start to think, okay, well, this you know, this one task, I would easily pay that much for one hour for someone to do what oh, they just totally. did. Oh, you know? so, yeah. totally. Yeah, totally. 
Yeah, and um, so just the other day, we're testing it out at work to see if we can get uh, enhanced productivity. And so the other day, I'm, I'm writing an article, and this was my request. I said I'm looking for you know 10 to 20 people who uh, know about Google Analytics that I want to reach out to um, in a future article. And so, boom, just a couple hours later. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, I did something like that. I was like, uh, <coughs> I, don't, I don't do much of any uh, local web design here, here in Indianapolis. So, it, so I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'll just test the water and see who's out there. Yeah. So, so I just put a task of like, please search for Indianapolis slash Lafayette slash wherever, Bloomington uh, web design slash development firm slash web develop, you know, application development. So, yeah. You know, I just kind of like comma, comma, everything I can shove in there. And then, <laughs> and then I thought, okay, well, I, I guess when I get home, I will, I will share a spreadsheet with you. And then, then I was driving home, and, and he's like, no need to share. I'm sharing a Google spreadsheet with you. It's all done. And I, and I look, and there's like 40-some 40 40 oh some rows of, of everything he's done. It's like, That's the greatest thing ever. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that's li this is literally the greatest thing ever. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if it were me, oh. I, I, it would have taken me it's probably not like food. It's ten not hours. Fire, Brandon. I mean, come right. on. This can get me food and fire, though. Yes. <laughs> um, it, it also, they, they will deliver things to you, but you, it'll tack on to your bill. Fancy and, hands. I need yeah. pizza. Give me pizza in a spreadsheet. They will do that. Pizza in a spreadsheet. They'll actually deliver things for you, but it'll add. Uh, I think you have to authorize transactions. That, no, they, they like can actually deliver. Card. Okay, so what? Are, okay, now I'm starting to get curious. What are the limitations of this? I can literally say, "Someone, I need food to my house" or something. They won't no. go anywhere. They won't okay. go anywhere for you, but they will like order something on your behalf or buy something on your behalf. Okay, you that's have cool. to like authorize their transaction. And I think I don't think they actually use your card or any of yeah. that thing. I think they add it on to your fancy hands bill or something like yeah. that. I don't know. Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, all right. Who is totally spouting yeah i think yeah. a dragon comes to your house and you give him a <laughs> i know <laughs> so anyway it's oh my god it's that's a fantastic cool. service i mean i mean and then and then you know it has like an iphone app and you can actually speak into the iphone app so you can basically oh my leave god, a that's message so cool. and say what you want them to do that okay that makes sense because like that's one thing that that like if if you're going to be getting people to do stuff like that for you sending a message i think would be good because that way you can be like hey here's a bit of context don't you know Say right. this, don't do that. I, right. I like that. I really like yep. that. Yeah, and there's limits. Yeah, there, that's I mean, amazing. I mean, uh, that's incredible. I think it's like a 15 minute task is what it's supposed to be because, because yeah. I I did something like that where I'm like, hey, go to my Basecamp account, make a new post that says, can you please give me the final punch list for everything we need to do on the site, and then with that response, go ahead and make a to do list and 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 the, and I I got like an email from from like that person's supervisor saying. Oh, uh, you've uh, you're asking for too much on your. Yeah, <laughs> you got oh slapped my on. God. I did. You got slapped on the fancy hands. <laughs> so, so um, then you just then you realize, hey, I could just act like this assistant and post it myself. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So how? Okay, flip flip it around, flippy dip. How do I make money off fancy hands? Let's say somebody needs stuff done. How do I do that? Let's say I want to be one of those people that does stuff for people. Do you know anything about that? Oh, I don't know. Go, go to like fancyhands.com. Because yeah. that, that's, 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 they have a careers page. That's cool. I mean, that's an awesome. There's app. a page. Go to fancyhands.com slash jobs slash assistance. All right, cool. Yeah, cool. Right. Hey, you guys want to see something cool that's Squarespace related? What? Fancy I'll hands? Show you. No. Boom. <laughs> oh, you met Anthony. Yeah, I did. Dude. I did. Yeah, so, so you're, in you're in the Big Apple, walking yeah. around, big man, big plans. Yeah, I was uh, I was there to see uh, Nick Papik, the uh, uh, the uh, business development guy there, yeah. to talk about the affiliate program because uh, I'm a Squarespace affiliate, of course, and yeah. and uh, so I I go there and uh, uh, exchange some some words with Nick and meet some folks on the team, get a brief tour, and then as I'm going down in the elevator, um, who should I see there but uh, Mr. Anthony Gasolina. And Santa Claus? That's amazing. Oh. Yeah, and then um, his uh, engineering, Michael um, he Heineman, I think, uh, was, was there as well. Um, he's a, He was a cool guy. He took the picture. And Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Yeah, Anthony was so cool. cool. He kind of played it off. He was like, oh, no, no, you don't want to get my picture. You want to get Michael. He's the, he's the guy, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. yes. Did he sign your moleskin notebook? 
No, he didn't, but he signed oh. my mole. No. No, 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 that's oh, not. All right, if I had my drum kit did here, he, I'd be Did he take it. the tagger and just kind of like pull it out? No, no, that's... It's, no, ow, Alan, Uniper, <laughs> over the line. Are we still on the commercial break? No, we've moved on to Squarespace stuff now. Um, I think the official segment that we've moved on to is the season-long. Um, we're going to do installments each each uh, each step throughout the season about moving from Squarespace five to Squarespace six. And so uh, we've got about you know five ten minutes left in the show here for tonight. And uh, so we figured, what are the the first steps in planning a move from Squarespace five to Squarespace six? So um, you know. Alan, I think you you and I were talking over email a, a couple weeks ago, and you were talking about importing data and content checks are really the first two steps that you should take when migrating your site. So why don't we talk about importing your data and checking out your content? Um, Alan, why, what do you mean by those two things? Well, yeah, I guess if if that is the first, I mean, are, are there other things? I mean, even a further out view, like, do you want to start comparing platforms? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do I want WordPress or Squarespace? <laughs> because I'm, you know, uh, we could bridge to another another podcast like this way. We could like, you could see me on another podcast. Here I am on the Drupal Show. Hi, hi, welcome to the Drupal Show. Welcome to Nothing But Verb. Brought 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 to you, brought to you by Fancy Feet. This is Light CMS for all your needs for things that do. Right. So anyway, oh, sorry. Um, so, so from five to six. Yeah. Right. So uh, I think ultimately you're talking about doing a, a content audit first, right? And you, you kind of alluded to this earlier on in the show where you're saying that you had a lot of like hidden pages, a lot of test right. pages, right, right. a lot of you know old yeah. pages, that type of thing. So I think what, you know, like what, when we were in the V5 world and we'd do that import, um, I think you would only, or even before it was cool on V6 to do the import, it, it would just import a blog. I'm pretty sure, or, or, or maybe that is a V5 thing. From V5 to V5, you could import a blog, and that was it. Um, but now you can be in V6 and then put in your V5 credentials and pull in the whole site, assistant co-host. Are you already making money for Fancy Hands? Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, yes, yeah, so, so then you can import. And let's say you have already in place on your V5, Six site. Let's say you have home about us contact. Those are the pages you got because I don't know any other pages that would make sense. Um, and then you do that import, and you're like, "Uh oh, am I gonna have a home and and a contact? What what's gonna happen?" So you just do it anyway, and you're fine. That that's basically where I'm going. Is you're fine with it because because you import and everything comes in from from the V5 site and everything's grayed out, which means it's not active yet. Um, and even if the page is called home and you got a home and you got to contact us and it's called contact us, it doesn't matter because they're different like IDs. They're different like psycho yeah. code kind of cool stuff that it, it won't matter. So basically then all those pages, <coughs> even, even the blogs and all that stuff comes in inactive. So you can actually open those and kind of just look at those locally and destroy things. You start yeah. just deleting, 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 and then... And then the stuff you want to keep, you keep. You rename it. You put it down here. You sort it. You slap it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh, no. <laughs> I actually, um, if I can interject, I think that one of the coolest things about moving to a new platform is it's almost, I think of it as an opportunity to just start over, like start fresh. Because there's so many moments in when I've been, you know, building a site and we've been on the same platform, you're constantly do, 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 just building and building and building. And you just want to rip the carpet out so many times, but you can't, you know, you can't right. because it doesn't make sense. But when a new platform comes out, when a new platform comes out, it's like an excuse. It's like, we're moving to a new platform. Obviously things are going to be down. Obviously things are going to be buggy. Obviously things are going to be whatever. It's an excuse to start over and just get a fresh start and be able to take a new perspective on it. And I think that's really important with Squarespace because they've they're offering so much more, and some of those new features um, I see them being used as core, core features of websites that didn't previously use them as that. You know. Yeah. So I think so, I think that yeah. Brandon Allen, let me ask you because you know Brandon Allen and I were talking about that earlier. Like a fresh start is kind of yeah. uh, is kind of nice, but but I know there are some people that that really had 
you know, their system on V5 where they would customize some things or they would add lots yeah. of different types of content, maybe build a lot of metadata into it and things yeah. like that. And now they're having to do a ton of manual rework. What's the best advice for people like that? Because I, I feel for those folks, you know? I, I say um, I know that the best thing is that you can be running your V5 site, keep that going, open up your V6 site, play around with that, start trying to understand how you're going to implement all the things that you had in your old site into your V6 site. And you can be doing that for really as long as you want, you know. And when you're when you do get it ready, then you can flick the switch and move everything over, you know. And I don't think that's a huge huge problem. But I think you're right, you know. A lot of people on V5, and I know, you know, when I when I was working on OK Geek, I think that it there was so much customization on we had going on V5, and that was the hardest part of moving to V6 is because some of those things were still not offered on v6 so it was then trying to figure out okay so I, I hacked it together here and that took me like months so now I'm gonna have to do it on here you know so it, sometimes it is that case and that's a really good point for some of those much more complex sites mm -hmm. that's a really good point is migrating those those things and some of them translate well but it is a different it, it's a completely different structure you know right. and the code looks completely different yep so and how so Alan, how many sites have you been moving over to V6 from V5 to V6? Like a lot. Oh man, like a, like a lot. Any, any like really complex ones, like ones that like had a crap ton of JavaScript code or anything like that? Um, not really JavaScript code. Um, this was over December through January. Like, okay. um, a large, okay. very, very large site, and I think that there were problems then, and most likely th those have been ironed out. But when we'd import, I mean seven journals from v5 to v6 if it, 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 it became like um you know we, we'd have to instruct the client that we either need to rip through each of these posts and redo you know all, all of the structure straight through or just don't touch those maybe, yeah. maybe these are art you know 100 percent archival because we we started seeing that when you'd go in and, and edit it there was things that were missing in, in yeah. the edit view on v6 you wouldn't see them because that there was in embed. I mean, I mean, like if it's a Vimeo, it, it like a early JavaScript <coughs> embed code, even before like Vimeo's iframe, you know. So, so it's like it, it's it, it's like a JavaScript version embed over there, and yeah. then V6 didn't know what to do with it because it, it it was probably just like straight up code or something. And and then when you click into it, it wants to go WYSIWYG, and I think it would WYSIWYG out because. <laughs> Ah, that oh, was good. Oh my God! Shows over. Everybody, go home. Yeah, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Vegas, yo. Um, what happened? What did I? I don't oh. know. You made a funny. You broke yeah. the show. I did. I did broke the show. Um, but uh, so anyway, it, it it was like one of those like touchy things. We said, all right, well, let's let's just go through and do it. And and yeah. and I'm I'm running into that now. Um, there's a really cool surf store that I'm working on. Um. And and they have some incredible, really cool local surf videos that, that were produced for them and stuff like that. So it's like nice. you want to make those things huge, and and they're also responsive, so, so they're going to look fantastic on on yeah. a, on a V6 site. Um, they exist over on their V5 site, and they're all like you know 640, and they're like 640 all all the way down for for everything. And yeah, we can import it. And it, it's going to be 640 when we import it, so it's just going to look kind of ridiculous when everything's yeah. working, and those are just going to be like static little squares. So, so we, we just kind of realized that the easiest way to do that is import it. You have the post. There's the little video. The, the the Vimeo code is right there. It's like you know six seven numbers. Just just go ahead and drag a new video block above it, and then test okay. it, and then and then and then just go ahead and delete it. So I mean, it, 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 it's not difficult to work around it. Yeah. Because, the content's there. You just have to kind of like add stuff that works for yeah. the future, you know. And um, something that I'd say, having learned from developing Squarespace sites in the past and having to upgrade things and stuff like that, is a really handy tool for. That's a big thing for me is when you have videos, pictures, stuff like that. What's really handy is um, get familiarizing yourself with the embed codes for those things because. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be able to change those those parameters with CSS. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, as long as your widths and sizes for posts and the structure of your site is consistent, mm -hmm. there's no saying you can't just be 
throwing a, a, some CSS in there saying, like, make sure all the Vimeo videos are this size. Important. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, that's true. Yeah, especially if they've produced those videos in-house and most likely they're all, let's, let's say they're all four, four to three or something. You know, let, let's say they're all exactly the same size because they all use the same camera. That's the thing, too. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, too. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, if they've cropped, like, <laughs> screen sharing stuff themselves, then yeah. things will look different. But, you know, I think... There's also a difference between like how how it presents to to the world when they're scrolling, and then when when, when you hit play, it's going to do probably something different. It's probably going to like be cropped down and have a box or something. Yeah, like that. and it's like yeah, the video player itself is going to be a certain size, but yeah, if it's a right. if it's a four by three video and a sixteen by nine player, you're going to have letterboxing. And and again, this is this is anal, de, you know, designer talking. You know, this this is like if if these content, you know, if this content stuff that that we're talking about is is strictly like, hey, I'm, you know, I've been, I've been posting stuff for the last three years. What, what, what's been happening on CNN? You know, if it's one of those things, mm. okay, it's content. You know, just yeah, it's, it's, it's content. Just, just go forward, and, and, and anything going forward, just start using this new standard. And if exactly. you want to, you know, get, 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 fan, <laughs> get fancy hands and tell them, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Snipply. Yeah. No, shoot, it's Snipply. Not again. Back for a second <laughs> season. I don't have Snipply on this. Isn't this season three or or what is this season it's three? Season three, three hundred one. Yeah, we we don't we're we're inconsistent with our episodes, but it's been long enough that we're now in season three. Also, I'd like to apologize for every, I'd like to apologize for everybody on the show that I showed up so late. I thought we were syncing our seasons. We got a call. We were talking. We were supposed to be syncing up with Breaking Bad and trying to cl- collab with them and make sure everything was on sync with them. But we started early. We jumped the gun. I got home. I was out riding horses. So. Horses. Wild horses? No, RCMP. I'm in the RCMP. Oh. Every Canadian's in the RCMP. You don't know that. <laughs> I don't know whether to believe you who now was, or whether. Who was that behind you? Someone just ducked down behind you. It was my girlfriend. Oh. She snuck in 007 style. Is her name RCMP? <laughs> And that's the show. RC- <laughs> RCMP maple syrup. I call it pancake. Oh. Do you really? That's, 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 that's oh, fantastic. Christ. I'm not that Canadian. <laughs> Pants cake. By the way, I love the email you sent me, the title of it. What does it say? You're never going to let me go about this Canadian thing, are you? It says, we're on now, maple syrup head, maple syrup head, hockey flannel plaid, beard face. What is that? I don't have a beard. If I could <laughs> get it. We're gonna get complaints from Canada, Alan. You better. You're you're not too far away. You're only in Indiana, so they could they could reach you. I'm sorry, Canada. I'm I'm doing a horrible job being an ambassador for everybody. But anyways, continue. Sorry. Oh, I think. Well, I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> we were we. I think we kind of broke the show again. But you know, we were kind of talking about importing content and and getting yeah. things um, set in. I think we. I mean, we got through a lot of good stuff talking about you know importing content bringing it over to six first then pruning the tree so to speak and then uh, hopefully you have some um, some uh, not a ton of tough time with your content afterwards but some folks might uh, might have some growing yeah. pains we'll and say, just but. again just to say like when you do import your content and you have a bunch of broken stuff like you're importing content you have a bunch of like, YouTube embeds and embeds for this and embeds for that what I usually do is I usually just load up CSS and let's say my new site the width is you know 700 pixels and my old site width was 800 pixels so now all the videos are like overlapping and I'm just like oh my god I have to go into every post and refit these videos and then you just don't ever end up doing it it's good to just like just throw some CSS and make sure every video is not exceeding that size or just do that for your past post because it's a lifesaver to do that yeah right and on don't know you can do that yeah, well, mm-hmm. most people don't know CSS, so that's that's also another limiting factor. But anyway, well, we've um, we've kind of uh, had a fun-filled hour here, and Brandon, it was nice that you could join us, uh, and we've got the gang back together for another awesome season. Woo! I'll be on time next time. Hey, that's cool. Oh we should do God. this more often. Let's that make a season horrible. out of it. What, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, getting to the end of the show here, Alan, why don't, why don't you tell folks where they can find you and... Uh, Oh, and, I thought we, yeah. I thought we were praying. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, I, this is <laughs> look, look. Oh, we, we owe every we owe everybody we owe, we owe everybody apologies now. You know that, right? right. 
We know we owe so many people apologies. By season six, we're going to have to like have an apology letter with every episode. Yes, in this episode, we apologize to <laughs> grandmothers scroll. everywhere <laughs> and Jim Edwards of Montreal. All right, so Alan, let's try that again. Where can where can people find you? Uh, over at squareflare.com. Squareflare for all your Squarespace needs. Squareflare. Awesome. And Brandon, where can folks find you these days? <laughs> In Canada. <laughs> awesome. And this is Josh Broughton. You can find me on bigpictureweb.com, JL Broughton on Twitter, and there's my Facebook page. And I bet Alan and Brandon, what, you guys are jealous. That? That's right. Yeah, that's right. You guys are jealous that I used an overlay. Yeah. Wait, you're, right. on, you're, yeah. On, you're on Facebook? I'm on Facebook, yes. Really? Not, not, <laughs> I am. I know. All all six of my fans say hello. But anyway, um, wow. I'm. What are you doing, Alan? He's all of a sudden at a rave. Alan's Alan, is it, a Alan rave. is it past your bedtime? I was sending. I I just sent my uh all my information over Morse code to the. I think I blew up my camera. Look at this. That's <laughs> I think awesome. You, you did it via Morse code. That's. I think. That's I think I killed ridiculous. my camera. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> there's. Am I washed no, out? That's not like, good. No, dude. we're fine. We can see you. Yeah. Oh, no. weird. It's yeah. all grayed out. That, to me. that Morse code is pretty ridiculous. Somewhere there's an old sailor somewhere being like, Helen Hooser! He <laughs> <laughs> read it wrong. Right. Alan Hooper. What? <laughs> What's a dot com? Awesome. Is that a dot, 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 dot com? Or is that dot, dot, dot? God damn it. Anyway, H, uh, it's, it's H, 